actually know what they're talking about. Um, I want to talk to you about issue number one. Uh, is Craig Douglas here? Oh, Craig Douglas is back here, and Craig is also actually know what they're talking about. Um, I want to talk to you about issue number one. Uh, is Craig Douglas here? Oh, Craig Douglas is back here, and Craig is also working with Move Arkansas Forward, which is an organization that we established under the aegis of the state chamber. Uh, it's a number of uh, disparate interests across the state, uh, and we came together to pass Garvey, uh, at which I'm happy to say was passed by over 80% in a special election. Um, so I want to talk to you about that, but I want to put the issue into context uh, just a little bit. Um, Arkansas, ironically, has the 12th largest highway system in the United States of America. We've got over 16,000 miles of state roads uh, that the department is responsible for. We are 43rd in the country in our ability to fund those roads i.e. our motor fuel tax uh, and the revenues that we derive from that, licenses, fees, and a dab of the severance tax uh, on natural gas. Um, I, I had run into plenty of personal and professional problems working uh, at Murphy Oil Corporation, but until I started hanging out with these guys, I just never run into a, a $19 billion problem. Um, we have $23 billion of needs over the next 10 years in the state of Arkansas. That includes I-49, I-69, and then all of the other maintenance uh, and construction needs, which includes a four-lane grid system around the state, which is one of the central portions of issue number one. We have $4 billion of projected revenue to meet those needs. And so, as a highway commissioner, you get to say no uh, you know, about 20 times out of 24, uh, which doesn't make you just entirely popular. Here's the problem. The red line looks like somebody's EKG that's in a significant amount of trouble. Uh, and that's highway revenue. And those are absolute dollars. If you put that into real dollars, you would see um, a decline in our purchasing power. And I'll give you a, a great example. Um, I'll, I'll pick one, a, a good one, the, the famous Jay Dickey, 100 million bucks for I-530. Um, got 100 million dollars, was manna from heaven, didn't require a state match uh, to build I-530 from uh, Pine Bluff to Wilmer. Um, job that nobody had on their radar screen. Take six years to acquire right away, do the engineering, design, and approval from Federal Highway. By the time the first contract for that was let, the purchasing power of that hundred million dollars had literally been cut in half to fifty-two million dollars. Um, so that red line really is declining in purchasing power. Conversely, state government revenue, general revenue, as you can see, has grown quite uh, healthily. Uh, we do not get general revenue uh, at the Highway Department. Uh, other than the severance tax on natural gas uh, from the Fayetteville ship. Um, if you're faced with an upside down 19 billion or 20 billion dollar problem, what do you do? And this has a point because it really ties directly into issue number one. Well, the first thing you need to do is figure out how you're spending your money. Uh, and I'm happy to tell you that the highway department, in my estimate, to the best of my knowledge, is the only department in state government has fewer employees today than it had 10 years ago, 20 years ago, or 30 years ago. It's also ranked number two, second best in the country in administrative costs per mile. And you can say, well, you got too big of a system, you're spreading all that over a bunch of miles, and that, you know, you can torture the data to make it admit to anything. Look at it another way uh, to kind of counteract that or, or to validate that is look at it on expended cost per, uh, expended administrative cost per expended dollar. We're fourth best in the country in that. So we're top decile, and you can say in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king, 
but that's the best benchmarks we've got is the other 49 states. And so Arkansas fares well, and these guys, uh, Carl, Scott, and their colleagues, when they get a dollar, uh, it's going on the roads uh, better than 49 other states, or 48 other states. The other thing you do, which, which everybody should be interested in, is how do you allocate the money? 16,000 miles of roads, everybody feels like they don't get their fair share, and guess what, they don't. The pie is not big enough to satisfy $23 billion worth of needs. And it's all parts of the state can fight over that pie, and man, I've fought over it for 9.7 years or whatever it is. Uh, Northwest Arkansas wants all your money. Central Arkansas wants all your money. Uh, everybody wants all your money. Uh, and, but you know, even if they win, their appetite's not going to be satisfied. Uh, and if, even if we got all of the money, you're not going to build I-49 and I-69 because there are 3.6 to $4.2 billion projects. And we have at our discretion about $250 million a year um, for road construction. Uh, so you can kind of see the problem. So, if you take half of the system, it carries 92% of the traffic in the state of Arkansas, that's it. Um, and if your favorite highway is not on it, it's probably because it doesn't have a traffic count. Um, this is how we have tried to engage in long-term planning with a very limited budget. Uh, this can change and it will change over time depending on demographic patterns but th this is what we stick to. And so when we do our long range plans, if we're trying to spend a dollar that's not on that system, other than for maintenance and safety, there really better be a written, really good justification uh, for why that is. Central to that is a four lane grid system. It's what Arkansas does not have. And it, would, it also puts us at an economic competitive disadvantage to our surrounding states. In my humble opinion, there are four things that decide whether we as Arkansans and employers bring jobs here, keep jobs here, or take jobs out of here. And it's the quality or lack thereof of education and a qualified workforce, the existence or lack thereof of adequate infrastructure, specifically four-lane connectors to interstate quality highways. It's our relative tax rates, and it's our quality of life. No, I've never had anybody come to Eldred, Arkansas and say, how's your prisons? Uh, or your welfare system, unless they were on welfare or something, I guess, but, uh, which is not a denigration. It's just these are the four things that move the needle from job creation. <clears throat> and Arkansas does not allocate its capital well uh, for those items. Uh, specifically infrastructure or relative tax rates. <clears throat> Issue number one, there's something in it for everybody. It benefits the entire state of Arkansas. It will be on the ballot. This was referred uh, by our colleagues that are uh, here in the legislature to the citizens of Arkansas so that we can decide whether or not we actually want to invest in ourselves. Uh, it is a 10-year temporary increase uh, in sales tax. It does not apply to groceries, medicine, or motor fuel. Um, it will raise about $230 million annually. 70% of that goes to the department. And then importantly, 15% of that goes to cities, all municipalities in the state of Arkansas and 15% of that goes to all 75 counties. And it's based on this kind of Byzantium formula of land mass, road miles, population, et cetera. But there's something in this for everybody. Um, if you look at the map and say, well, you know, what about my part of the state? Uh, take a look at this booklet, and I think Craig's got a whole bunch of them out there waiting for you, or if you want them now, we can pass them out. This has every county in the state, every municipality in those counties, and it shows you exactly what you get in your area, uh, your city, or your county uh, should this pass in November. 
Um, importantly, cities can bond that stream of revenue. Currently, counties cannot, but I'm told by our legislative colleagues that's a pretty easy fix in the next session. I don't see anybody doing anything, but I think it's an easy fix. Um, also, importantly, it carves out one penny of our existing revenue in perpetuity to create a, a state aid, a city aid fund. Uh, there is a county aid fund equivalent to that, but this one penny generates marginally over $20 million a year, and cities can apply for those funds um, to, to do their projects. But we are going to bond this if it passes. Uh, from the department. Uh, the bonds would be retired over the course of about a 10-year period. It would be a $1.3 billion construction, project, uh, construction bonds and about a $1.8 billion construction program. The tax would expire when the bonds uh, are paid off. And the, the good thing about this is you know exactly where the money's going. Uh, there's a map that has specific projects about where this money is going. And critically, this construction program would support and or create 40,000 jobs in the state of Arkansas, all without increased taxes on groceries, medicine, or motor fuel. Um, at the end of the day, people just say, well, what's in it for me? Um, these are our existing uh, four-lane highways in our part of the world, inclusive of the interstate. Uh, this is our current STIP, or statewide transportation improvement plan, um, and the, some of the work that's been going on. Uh, the one piece I, oops, piece I point to right there, around Monticello, is the first two lanes of I-69 in the state of Arkansas. Um, federal earmarks, when that wasn't a bad word, uh, were allocated to I-69. Uh, we have that money, it, uh, it's obligated, and if we did not spend it, uh, it would obviously go back uh, to Washington. So we looked around and the department came up with a so-called segment of independent utility and it is a Monticello bypass. We had enough money uh, earmarked to do that, and so those will literally be the first two lanes of I-69 proper to be constructed. Ultimately, it would be four lane and become part of I-69. But I have to tell you, if that's gonna take place, or I-49, then we're going to need a major federal program to do that. Um, I would tell you in the last stimulus package, it was 800, billion dollars or so. 2.8% uh, of that went to infrastructure and not all of that went to highways. Uh, the green bits are our program uh, for 13, 14, 15, and 16, which has uh, been out for public comment. Uh, we've just sent it to Federal Highway uh, for their comments and approval. Uh, you'll see I see David Rankin, and for 9.7 years, he's been on my case about this bridge uh, just uh, east of town. Uh, and David, my father always said I was a little bit slow, uh, but the, the bridge is in there. Uh, as you can see, this will get four lane, and then we'll do a bit of 82 toward El Dorado. I think that stamps perhaps there. Is that right, Carl? Uh, this bit? That's another piece on 82. Um, importantly, what this does is it starts to in Scotts, 82 is a four-lane corridor across the southern part of our state. And if you will have noticed, it was on the four-lane grid system uh, as a four-lane road. It's one of the most important routes for truckers um, as an alternate to I-20. It's four-lane in Mississippi, it's four-lane in Texas. Should have been four-lane in Arkansas long, long ago. Um, that's the current step. It's kind of depressing when you start looking at a map because, you know, the money just doesn't go very far. The red bits are the Interstate Rehabilitation Program, uh, which is Garvey, uh, <laughs> and we will rehabilitate some, a major portion of the interstate system, uh, and that's a critical element. 
And this is the half cent sales tax. This is what it would do for our part of the world. Uh, from Magnolia, it would four lane 82 west. Uh, coming out of El Dorado, it would four lane 82 to 172. And it four lanes uh, 82 and 425 from Hamburg to the Louisiana line, uh, which would in fact give Georgia Pacific and those in cross it four lane access to I-20. It completes uh, 167. Regrettably, there is not enough money to complete 167 in our normal funding program or the next step. Uh, when I got on the commission, this part of the world said, our number one priority is to get 167 four lane uh, to Little Rock. Um, with this half cent sales tax, that would be completed. In essence, it would fill in the gap between Hampton and Fordyce. Um, the benefits of this, as this is just a, a text of those benefits, um, this is two counties uh, that are just extracted from the book uh, that Craig was passing around, and you can see the amounts uh, that would go for Columbia County uh, and Union County. Um, if you to total it all up, it's about $700 million that would go to cities and counties. That is substantial. They have huge road needs. Uh, I'm actually here today because Floyd Nutt called me several months ago and said, look, we need for you to come and talk Southwest planning, and then it sort of evolved into uh, kind of a, a combined group setting. But the county judges here and mayors can certainly tell you what their road needs are and they have exactly the same problems that we as a state have, um, you know, with increasing cost and declining revenue. Um, this is really important issue for the state of Arkansas. Um, this is a tax that does not grow government. It creates or supports 40,000 jobs in the state of Arkansas, and it, uh, it does it without increasing the sales tax on groceries, medicine, or motor fuel. Um, I would tell you that if uh, this was part of the Blue Ribbon Finance Committee's recommendations to the state of Arkansas. And contrary to popular belief, that was not a smorgasbord. It was a three-course menu. One was Garvey. One was pass a temporary half-cent sales tax to go to four-lane highways and get the work done. The other was to transfer the existing motor fuel tax on cars, trucks, tires, batteries, accessories, and repairs out of general revenue over a 10-year period where you're only taking growth money, nobody gets hurt. So if you're in education or prisons or DHS, don't come out of your skin, that's growth revenue. Uh, and allocating it to the areas where arguably you get the highest return for state dollars in the state of Arkansas, and that's on infrastructure. If we don't have adequate infrastructure, then you are at a competitive disadvantage for recruiting jobs, keeping jobs here. Uh, and it's absolutely critical, and it's tied with education, infrastructure, relative tax rates, and quality of life. Um, if you have questions, comments, uh, one thing that I've certainly discovered, I uh, knew from life's experience, you can't make everybody happy all the time. I had no idea until I got to be a highway commissioner you can make everybody mad all the time. <laughs> uh, importantly, this frees up money that can go to other projects. Because let me just be blunt with you. If we don't take care of some of the jobs in this, and 40% of the money goes to Central Arkansas, uh, it's where the boats are, it's where the cars are, and it's where the lane miles are. 25% of this goes to two counties in Northwest Arkansas, that in Washington County. In Northwest Arkansas, this would expand I-540 between Fayetteville and Bentonville, and it would build the first two lanes of I-49 on the Bella Vista Bypass, and then they can toll that to build the other two lanes because the traffic count warrants it. Uh, it would get XNA, a four-lane connector to 540, and in Central Arkansas, it will complete I-40 between Conway and Little Rock. We're doing a piece now, and I think it would take us about 35 years to finish it under our normal funding system. Uh, this would be completed. All of these jobs, by the way, would be let to contract within five to six years, 
and complete it within seven to eight years, the bonds will be amortized in the 10th year and the tax is gone by constitution. Um, in central Arkansas, the highest traffic count in the state is the interstate across the Arkansas River by the Clinton Library from uh, 530, 30 to 40. This would expand that. That's about a $350 million project. Uh, it would expand 67 to Cabot. Uh, it would four lanes 70 from I-30 to Hot Springs, to name a few. It also does a, a fair bit of work around Jonesboro as well. And then you've seen in our part of the world what it does for us. Uh, if this does not pass, then I can tell you that the state is going to have to address some of the pressing needs in our uh, urban areas, and that money will most assuredly be coming out of our, our areas. We simply don't have the funds uh, to deal with the pressing needs of the state. If this passes, uh, those things can be taken care of, uh, and it frees up a significant amount of money that can remain on other portions of the Arkansas primary highway network. So it's really critical. Uh, just like Garvey, uh, the analogy is the same. Had we not passed Garvey, we would have been right back where we were in 1999 when we had to put 60 plus million dollars off of the non-interstate system onto interstates merely to maintain them. Uh, the analogy is exactly the same, and I would encourage you to get really familiar with this. Um, it is a critical issue for the state of Arkansas. The legislature have given us an opportunity to decide if we want to invest in ourselves, and I would ask you, if we don't, who do you think will? Thanks very much. Uh, oh, by the way, I forgot almost my most important point. Uh, I'm fundraising. Um, I chair, I co-chair Move Arkansas Forward. Our polling data suggests, if, if you just ask the horse race question, are you, would you be for a half cent sales tax to fund highways? 43% of people of Arkansas say yes, 53% say no, the rest don't know. If you then say, if you knew this was a temporary 10-year tax for dedicated projects on a four-lane grid system, to connect all parts of Arkansas, improve safety, support and or create 40,000 jobs in the state of Arkansas, the money goes to cities and counties. We go up to 51, Craig? 50. 50, close. And then if you say, well, what knucklehead would want to raise a half cent tax in this environment? And don't you think the Highway Commission and a bunch of nabobs and Carl's leaning on the shovel, watching Scott leaning on the shovel? <laughs> uh, we, we go down to 49 percent. Um, and so this is a statistical dead heat, uh, which means we need to have a well-funded, uh, clear, crisp, articulate campaign on the benefits to all of Arkansas and by region uh, if this is to pass. And so I am unabashedly raising money because I co-chair the effort to do that. Many of you in this room have contributed. Uh, if you haven't, I would ask you to seriously consider it uh, for your business uh, because it is really critical to our part of the state. This gets Highway 82 uh, on the map as a four-lane highway, and I want the state of Arkansas to feel as obligated to finish Highway 82 as they did to finish 65, 167, 65 North to Harrison, and other projects. 82 deserves it. South Arkansas deserves it, and if ask me, the next highway commissioner that succeeds me needs to be from Columbia County, Arkansas. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to answer questions. I duck pretty well. I got about 9.7 years of experience at it. <laughs> um, but I, you know, really, I, I want to engage in a conversation. If you have any questions or concerns about it. Um, our specific projects. I mean, Carl is certainly in charge of this region, and he's very familiar with every single project in this area. So I'd open it up to questions, Mike, if that uh, works for you guys. I'll start off by asking this. Uh, I mentioned the uh, passing lane, and I go all over the state, and I see passing lanes having been built here and there, and how it takes off the pressure of that slow truck traffic. Uh, none of the passing lane plans are included in this particularly, are they? They're included in the general minute order of the commission. 
That's correct. This would be for widening two four lanes. This would the, the half cent sales tax is intended to try to build out and solidify a four lane grid system in the state of Arkansas. But importantly, it frees up money that we can then go back and do passing lanes on other pieces uh, of the Arkansas primary highway network or areas where the traffic warrants it. Um, and so it, while the passing lanes aren't in a half cent, it means that we're more able to do that in our normal course of funding. Um, and you know, that's clearly part, part of the deal. Yes, sir. Does that mean he's supporting the half cent sales tax? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm looking for the question. <laughs> um, great. I mean, he needs to support the half cent sales tax if that's going to happen. Uh, he needs to seriously consider uh, allocating general revenue, the existing motor fuel tax per Blue Ribbon Committee. Uh, and we need to think about how does Arkansas allocate capital. Me, me too. Uh, infrastructure, relative tax rates, education, quality of life. I'm with you. Yes, sir. Stand up. Railroad company has uh, a lot to say about that. So we would have to get to them and the plan to do to make that wider. Well, how do you put put a bridge over the railroad in Preston? Uh, I don't know why you can't put a bridge <laughs> over the railroad here. You could. <laughs> it takes money. 
I mean, we there there's a lot of there are a lot of areas like that that, quite frankly, we need to address. Um, there are safety issues. There, I mean, I wish we could address all $23 billion of those concerns. We simply uh, can't, and we try to get to the ones that are uh, the highest priorities. Um, it is, it's, it's noted, Carl's well aware of it, uh, and I wish we had the money to go fix them all immediately. We simply don't. It's on the radar screen, uh, and it's on the list. Everybody ought to say, I don't know, at least once a day. <laughs> um, the problem, I mean, it, that's not a problem that's unique to Callion or Quinn. Uh, we have the same problems at B Branch on 65 uh, around Clinton. And in fact, at the last commission meeting, I asked the department to take a look at this because it's at are there additional funds, whether they're federal economic development grants or they're federal highway funds? How do we try to address these problems? Um, because we realize the problem. I mean, simply, you can't, you can't do it if you don't have the money. That's a problem we're really familiar with, uh, a la Buckner. Um, and so we're, we're trying to take a look at how do you do that. And I've encouraged them to give it some serious thought. Do we, uh, do we loan the money uh, and then have the ratepayers pay it back uh, over you know, the amortized life of the project? I don't know the answer to it. Um, but if we don't do those, then what I, I do know is the projects won't get done. And then when you get around to doing them, they will cost way more. And that, you know, it's, it's just a fact, and so it, um, it's one of the many conundrums that, you know, we're all trying to uh, figure out. And I, I don't know the answer, uh, but I have asked the department to take a look at it because it's not unique uh, to county. Uh, well, if there's no more questions, I'll take checks. Um, <laughs> Yes, not just the bridge, it would widen, um, I'm kind of a techno peasant, but let me see if we can. In short, what it would do, uh, right there, this would widen uh, 82, 79, and widen 82, and the bridge would be right in kind of the, the L of that. Uh, but that would be widened to uh, five, five lanes with a uh, turning line in the middle. What's the yellow below Magnolia? That is a job in the current step. It's uh, probably a rehabilitation or maintenance job. That piece on 79. That's in the current step, I believe. Yeah. Oh, oh, Thanks. Yes, ma'am.
Highway 82, first of all, is programmed uh, to be a four-lane highway from Lake Village to Texarkana. And you know, that will take a while. Um, but the, I mean, the most important part was to get Highway 82 included as part of the four-lane grid system in the state of Arkansas, which we did in 2003 or, or four. Um, uh, the other part is to keep making a lot of noise uh, that Highway 82 is a critical route and I would suggest working with the trucking industry and other people and keep it in front of the department and the commission um, you know, a, as a critical route. Uh, I mean, everything is in place and programmed, by the way, is a euphemism for a great idea that ain't got any money. Successor was from this part of the world, to be frank with you. Uh, it's just the facts. Um, I, you know, I, the irony of this is the declining revenue dollars. You know, when we put Highway 82 on the four-lane grid system, I fully expected to be able to allocate dollars and be way farther down the road. Pardon the pun. Uh, sitting in 2012, uh, but we experienced inflation, you know, when oil goes to 147 bucks and labor and steel and concrete, it's a pretty, I could have shown you a lot of slides on what $100 million would have done for bridge replacement or four laning from 70, 80, 90, 2000 current. The point is, is it's all, every single one of them are about a 45 degree angle down to the right, $100 million won't get you to, um, I'm gonna get you about a halfway to El Dorado maybe. Uh, won't get you to Camden. Um, kind of depressing. I understand the problem. I, this is one piece of a three course meal to try to begin to ameliorate some of those problems. And I, I mean, I can't emphasize strongly enough that if this passes, I think it provides the legislature uh, with a serious opportunity to sit down with the governor on how does this state allocate capital. Arkansas is one of the states that does not allocate general revenue to highways other than the severance tax on natural gas, uh, which we collect about $35 million a year. Now, the governor doesn't believe that the Fayetteville Shale has done $400 million worth of damage to roads in the Fayetteville Shale area, but even if we're half wrong, it's $200 million. Right? $35 million a year to fix it. Uh, a lot of the disposal uh, of the water is coming to uh, commercial disposal wells in South Arkansas. So what about 60, 167 and 79? You know, there's just not enough money raised from that. Many other states allocate general revenue to highways. Missouri did exactly what the Blue Ribbon Committee recommended by initiating act. Safer, smoother, sooner, I think they called it. Um, Louisiana has done so by legislative uh, initiative. Um, it, it's really something Arkansas is going to need to get to grips with because you're not going to be able to lower our tax rates in the state of Arkansas if you don't have adequate education, adequate infrastructure, and a quality of life. There's 2.8 million people in the state. There are more people on Walmart parking lots in greater Houston on one weekend. It's a number I'm familiar with. Uh, than live in the state of Arkansas. So we've got to have a modicum of economic growth. Uh, Well, I 
I said, I'm fundraising, y'all. Uh, the department cannot um, engage in campaigns. I'm under no such restrictions. Um, and you know, we, we need to raise money uh, to, to pass this. Uh, we've got to have uh, TV spots. They need to be localized in our part of the world, Central Arkansas, Northeast, uh, and Northwest Arkansas. If anything in this has resonated with you, um, I would encourage you uh, to seriously uh, consider a donation to this campaign. It's Move Arkansas Forward. The website, movearkansasforward.com. Uh, Craig has been integrally involved with this. He worked with the Blue Ribbon, which is why I grabbed him. It didn't require much of a learning curve. Um, and uh, we did pass Garvey uh, resoundingly. I would have never thought anybody, 80% of anybody, would agree on anything. Um, but, you know, this is, this is a horse race. I mean, it is 50-50. And there, I don't know that there will be organized opposition, uh, but I dare say there will be. Um, I mean, it's just an anti-tax environment, and regrettably, uh, this is a tax. Uh, but it is not a tax that grows general revenue. And it is not a tax that grows state government. It's a tax that goes to our highest return. Government does a lot of stuff I personally don't want them to do. I want them building roads. Um, and I, I would hope that uh, you would agree with that. Uh, Mike, I, like I said, I'm, I'll be happy to hang